must be a day for hiccups, isn't it? Several other kids with hiccups today. Yeah, that's an equal sign, yeah. So transformations of functions, given a function f of x, we're just going to use x squared. So the first thing we'll do is if I have f of x plus k, so an example would be x squared plus 3. So the k there would be considered outside the function. So it's not inside the parentheses, it's outside the function. When things are outside the function, things get translated up. So it says translate the graph k unit up. So after we add k, then we can subtract k. So that'd be like x squared minus 3. So f of x, a function, minus k, in this case k is 3, that's going to be translated in graph k units down. So those are kind of the terminology that when they ask you to describe what's happening, instead of saying it goes down, um, you say it translates the graph 3 units down, or it translates the graph 4 units up. So if we go inside, this is what it would look like. It'd be f of x plus k. So this would be inside the function. The example would be x plus 3 squared. Notice the square, the 3 is now inside the parentheses. The insides are always backwards. So if it's an x plus k, that's going to translate the graph not to the right, but to the left. So it's a plus k. Mathematically, what's happening is if I have x plus 3, what does x have to be to get a 0? What number plus 3 equals 0? Negative 3. So you see how the answer to that question that I just asked, I asked you what the 0 of that was. The, zero, the value of the 0 would be negative 3. So that moves it 3 units to the left, negative 3 as well. Okay, so inside is dealing with what numbers make that equal to 0. Flip it around. So x minus 3 squared. Now, what number minus 3 would equal 0? That would be a positive 3. So translate the graph k units to the right. Mostly you're just thinking what number is going to be backwards is on the inside. So if it's minus a number, it moves to the right. If it's plus a number, it moves to the left. Is that okay on there? Okay, so those four groupings, those are all the translation rules. And now we have the reflections. Are we doing okay? We're going too fast? Okay. So here's the first one. If I have a negative f of x, so the negative is on the outside because it's not inside the principle, that's going to be reflection over the x axis. So that was number two on Tuesday, and we were dealing with the absolute value, graphing the absolute values. The second one I gave you, it moved the graph down, it pointed down instead of up. Okay. That's a reflection over the x-axis. The example's over there on the right this time. That'd be negative x squared, or the opposite of x squared. So x squared makes everything go positive. So if you put a negative in front of it, all the positives go negative. Real sad. Anyway. 
If I move the negative to the inside, f of negative x, that's going to be reflection over the y-axis. So it takes your x value that you started with, it takes the opposite of it, and then it squares it. The first one would square it, then take the opposite. The second one takes the opposite and squares it. So those are the two reflection rules. Next ones are dilations. Those are going to be the enlargements and the shrinking. So a times f of x. So that would be 2 times x squared. Where a is greater than 1. So these would be 1.1 on up. So this is what we were talking about. You said the graph looks thinner. Okay, it's skinnier. Okay, what's actually happening is you get a vertical stretch in your graph. That's all that's happening there. You get a vertical. It's taking one point and it's making it higher. Think of slope. The higher the number, the steeper the slope. Same thing occurs here. So the second set is when the A is between... Oops. The A is between 0 and 1, so like 1 half x squared or 1 third x squared or 0 0.01 x squared or 0 0.05 or any of those, 9.8. So if it's less than 1, it's actually going to compress it, and you, would, you were saying it makes the graph look wider. It's actually a vertical compression. Add a little extra 2 there for the next line. So this table, all this here is going to be something you want, you'll want to look back on uh, as we do our homework. Okay. We're going to move inside. So now it's f of b times x, and so instead of using an a, I'm going to use a b. Now remember on the translations, the inside things fit things backwards. The same holds true with the B. They're on the inside. It's going to be backwards from the A's that are on the outside. So here, if the inside number, I have 2x squared, if that's greater than 1, it's going to compress the graph horizontally. So these tie together. Any, anything that's on the inside is either going to, is going to affect it things horizontally. It's either going to translate it left and right, or it's going to squish it and expand it left and right. So then the final one will be oops, don't need that yet. When B is between 0 and 1, that's actually going to stretch the graph horizontally. So when we get to the homework tomorrow, uh, this table, this list is going to be something that's going to be helpful because part of the assignment is taking an equation and describing how it's, how it's changed. So using words like translate or reflection or compressing, stretching, those sort of things. So if you can figure out which where it fits in, this, in all of this right here, that's going to be helpful with it. Still writing.
here's ax squared. So is this a inside the x squared or outside the x squared? Compare it with this one right here if you need to. Okay. So this would be considered outside. So if it's outside, is it going to stretch it vertically, do things vertically, or is it going to do things horizontally if it's outside? Vertically. Okay. So the A's there are going to do things vertically. So if you watch this point here, when I turn this on, I'm going to change this A so it's increasing and decreasing. Watch that point. Where is it going? Is it changing vertically or horizontally? So this is what we're saying. This is the basic point, and it's getting stretched vertically. So that point is going higher and higher, and then when it starts changing, it starts coming down. Now it's getting compressed vertically. Okay. Now this is the B. That one on. I want you to watch that point right there. And you compare it with that point. See how it's not moving vertically, it's not reflecting over the x axis. The B's on the inside, that's going to affect it horizontally, so it's getting stretched horizontally and compressed horizontally. And then you have, when it flips around, that's a reflection point. That's when it switches from positive to negative, negative to positive. So you see the difference there between being stretched vertically and being stretched horizontally. Now, I can make these two graphs look exactly the same. Okay, so it's not like they're going to be completely different all the time. Um, there. So if I take this one off, you see they just overlap each other. So they can look the same. It's just a matter of how they got there. Okay. So a few more notes. We'll get some examples tomorrow. So we have four types of functions. So these are the four types of functions that we're working with here. Okay. Constant, linear, quadratic, and absolute value. Absolute function, absolute value function. So these are the four types of function. A constant function is just a horizontal line. That would be f of x equals k. So it could be f of x equals 3, f of x equals negative 2, f of x equals 32 billion, f of x equals pi. Linear functions, those are what our slope-intercept form is good for. Didn't bring any for us? No. Was it a breakfast pie? I don't know. <laughs> no.